Hello, in this video I'm going to take you through the dynamic product groups in Shopware. As the name speaks for itself, these are the groups of products that are formed by dynamic rules and can be displayed at different locations in your shop. As the products are assigned to the group automatically according to the rules defined in the group, the number of products in the group can vary from time to time. They stay in the group as long as they fulfill the conditions of the rules in the product group and they are taken off the group when they don't. So let's get started. Start on Shopware Admin. In order to reach the dynamic product groups, first of all click on Catalogs and then Dynamic Product Groups. As you can see in the overview list, there is already a created product group with the name new items. Since we want to add a new one, we click on add dynamic product group. In the next screen, there are two sections that should be filled out. The first one is about the general information of the group. And in the second part, we set the conditions. Now let's create a group that will contain the products with the prices greater than 200 euros. For this, first of all, we give a name for the group, say expensive products, and we can give a description here underneath. You can select the same description as the name of the product group or give more brief information for the feature if you have many product groups or give a hint for the other users who are using already this Shopware admin area. Let's move on and set the conditions for the product group. Under conditions, you can choose a property for which you will set the conditions. When you click on it, you see a list of items like product, product number, active, free shipping, etc. for which you can set the rules. Since our product group will be about the price level, I will go ahead and select price here. On the right hand side, we can choose an operator that will be as a rule and conditions for the group. Since we want the products with the prices bigger than 200 euros, I will choose an operator here is greater than and enter the value on the right hand side 200. When you click on the preview button here, you see the list of products already fulfilling this condition. And as you can see, there are some products with the same prices. These are the variants of a main product. On the right hand side, we see the stock information. Let's say we don't want the products with the stocks more than 20. And we will display the products equal to or less than 20. To do this, we close this window and add another condition by clicking on end button here and select from the list stock. As an operator, we select is less than or equal to 20. And if we click on the preview button again, we see that the list is no more containing any products with the stock level more than 20. We can choose or add another condition like clicking on the OR button. This means either this condition or both of the above conditions should meet to display the products in the group. As we don't want this additional condition for now, I will delete the container and then click on the save button here to save the dynamic product group. So the next step, let's see how we can display these products in the group in the storefront. For this, we should assign this product group to a category. So in order to do this, we go to categories under catalogs and in the list, create a new category named test. 
I click on the new test category, activate it and go to products tab in order to assign the dynamic product group products. So by default, as you can see, manual selection is uh, chosen as the type. So we don't want any fixed products in this category. So we select and change from manual to dynamic product group. Underneath, we can select one of the dynamic product groups created before. So for this category, I will select the expensive products that we have created before. You can see already the list of items and products here underneath. And then I go ahead and save the category. So let's have a look how this is displayed in the storefront. First, we should refresh the page and then see the test category here. And then when I click on it, I see the items and products here displayed under the test category. As you can realize, there are less, less number of products from the list in the backend as some of them were the variants of the products. So as another example, to see how we can display these products in the storefront on homepage as a product slider, we use the layouts under the shopping experiences under content. We click on the shopping experiences and click on the homepage layout. To add a block here, we click on the plus button and as a block category, we select commerce. From the list, we select product slider and drag and drop it on the left hand side. So we should assign the products to this element and block. In order to do this, we click on the element settings button on the corner, give a name for the slider, expensive products. As you can see here also, manual assignment is selected by default. So we switch from manual to dynamic product group and select from the list expensive products as we want these products to be displayed in the product slider. We click on done and then save the layout. So let's have a look how this is seen in the storefront. I switch the storefront, refresh the page, and as you can see, the products containing in the dynamic product group is listed in the home page. I hope now you have a better understanding about the dynamic product groups and can create your own dynamic product groups in the future to display and be flexible in the storefront.